All right, you can open it. Open the door. Walk me through. Good morning, friends. Jill here. Welcome to Whispering Willow Farm. You can tell by the sound of my voice, I've been a little under the weather the last few days, but all is well. We are on the mend. I'm out in the garden this morning, wanted to show you guys around. I did want to make a couple announcements on the front end of this video. Today is the last day to enroll in the Beginning Blooms, the summer cutting garden uh, that my friend Sean and I did. We are going to close it um, on December 1st and then we'll have our live Q&A. Uh, but if you do want to enroll in that, uh, the link will be down below. Today will be the last day to enroll before we close it and it will not be available again until February. Uh, so that's the first announcement. Second announcement is we have our merch live. Uh, it'll be live through December 6th, so only a few more days left to grab it. But we have uh, t-shirts, long sleeves, and sweatshirts, and our buckets of happy design. I'm going to pop a photo up here so you guys can see it. Uh, we ended up going with a company that was super, super local to us, and so we'd love your feedback on that. It's going to be the same type of shirts we've always done, the Bella Canva which is actually what I have on now. Uh, we did only do the one buckets of happy design, but we will be putting out another one, um, and I think around February. So those are the announcements on the front end of the video. Get the boring stuff out of the way. Um, but I was coming through the garden the other day and did not realize that we had our legit frost. Um, I did a video a few weeks back about our first frost, but it was a light frost, and I was really surprised that not a lot of damage had happened to my garden. Uh, but I came out here, and over Thanksgiving, we had like a legit, legit frost and there are a lot of things that are just totally dead in the garden so we're gonna go take a look around and see what's going on believe it or not I've been pretty hands-off in the garden I actually haven't even we turned irrigation off out here in the garden um, because the fall and winter garden just does not require near as much as far as water as far as attention like there's just so many things that the fall and winter garden are just absolutely lovely for um, and so I'm surprised too just as I've been walking through and I realized wow we turned the irrigation off wow i haven't been out here like weeding i haven't been tending to it near as much and it's just thriving there's no more bees look it all died you see that wait look the plant died so this was one that i noticed uh really really took a hit i mean our huge basil plant as you guys can see is just totally dead kind of sad all of our kales though are still thriving hey sis Hey, Mama. How are you? Good. Good. Look at all of our broccoli. It is doing really, really well. So we'll be able to like harvest off of this pretty soon. All of these plants have done great. All of my lettuces are still doing great. We came and harvested a bunch of these um, for salads for Thanksgiving. But over here, you guys, it's really sad. <laughs> this is a sad thing. This is what happened. All my bean plants died. I did get that huge harvest off of them. I'm going to go through and pick a bunch of these today. You can see that they, they took a hit. So I'll probably try some of these. If they don't taste good, we'll just feed it all to the pigs. Uh, so really, it's not wasted. But now I need to go through and start cleaning off all of the trellises. Um, and they just, it all died. Man, it all died. But there is a ton of beans on here too. Look at that. So whether we eat them or the pigs eat them, somebody's going to have a good lunch today. Our heads of cabbages are heading up really, really nicely. We have some in the tunnel. I mean, look at that, y'all. That's huge. That's so huge. So we'll definitely be eating some of that. The red cabbage is still taking a lot longer. You guys can see we've got a little head in there, but nothing like super big. All of these are looking great. The zinnias over there died. Then we've got all of our carrots. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, let's, oh yeah, look at that, y'all. Yes. So that's exciting. I'm pretty sure I mentioned to you guys, I am just leaving the carrots in here. The soil is being the storage for me right now. That way I don't have to store them inside. 
we have got all of those radishes that we still harvested they took up an entire refrigerator uh, that's how many of them that there were and then we've got probably five or six cabbages out in the tunnel that are ready to harvest probably five or six cabbages here that are ready to harvest so i don't have a ton of storage space so anything that i can just store outside in the soil that's exactly what i'm doing with our cabbages, we plan on making sauerkraut. If you guys have any recipes, I would love, love, love them. So leave them down in the comments below. So the plan is to make sauerkraut. The plan is to eat a lot of fresh cabbage. We're actually having some friends over for dinner tonight. And that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some pork chops from BW Family Farms. We're gonna have some fresh uh, green beans and cabbage from the garden. And then we're gonna have some roasted potatoes and it's gonna be so good. Uh, that's like kind of our love language if you haven't been able to notice we love cooking for people. <laughs> So while things are dying in the raised bed garden, I'm not really that sad because it's gonna give me plenty of opportunity to get out here and clean off those trellises and amend those beds. Um, especially because January and February, we like really kick into high gear around here. I would honestly say that February is one of the biggest months we have on the farm, even aside from like summer prep and things like that, just because we're starting so many seeds, we're trying to get greenhouses up and things like that. and so. If I can spend December and January getting all the trellises down that I won't need for the summer or the spring, amending those beds, cleaning off those trellises, it's going to save me a lot of time um, when I'm like, super, super busy early in the spring. So I think it's all going to work out pretty well. Hey. Hi. What you doing? Oh, just watering animals. Watering animals. Mm -hmm. We've been tag teaming the animals a lot lately. Oh, don't you get my feet wet, Junie B. Hey, look at all that greenery. You can barely see it. But... Is that where you planted? Yep. Did you plant some more the other day? I did. What'd you plant? Planting ryegrass, more turnips, and more dicon oh, radishes. Put it back in there. There you go. Can I let them in on a secret? Uh, if you let me in first. You know the secret. Oh, put it back <laughs> in, Junie. All right. We're going to let you guys in on a little secret. You got to come over here, babe. Oh, you gotta turn the water off. So you guys know Nathan has been diligently planting these pastures for our animals. And there's a lot of things that we would love to have done as soon as we moved to this farm, but that just wasn't feasible and there was a lot of things we wanted to have in place beforehand. And established pasture was one of those things. So Nathan's been diligently working to get our pastures established been doing good grass seed is starting to finally come up which is really encouraging you can't see anything because of all the leaves but yeah. that's actually a good thing yeah so. so we had our first like legitimate conversation the other night about bringing in a dairy cow <laughs> despite his face he was actually really on board um and so that just got me so excited which means i'm going to be spending the next few months researching any books you guys have any youtuber whatever that looks like i'm gonna just be spending the next few months taking in all the research that i can he's gonna be continuing to build pasture we're gonna be getting bin turns goats off of our property to let that area rest which is where we would put the cow is up there where uh, jessica had her goats and so that is something that's exciting it gives us something to look forward to in the spring and the summer um, if we can make it happen we're not like holding our hat on it has to be this spring and summer but before I think we had a two-year goal and now that seems like not a two-year goal uh, which is exciting it is exciting you were excited for what for me to make butter I want butter he wants we go through a lot of butter yes we do and luckily we do have some good resources down the road that can can help us we do we Andrew at BW Family Farms we and do and we buy from a local dairy right now which is great because we're able to support them but it does make a lot of sense for us to have a cow on our homestead because one we are buying a lot of milk there's a lot of different things we can make from that milk and we could feed a lot of our animals so when you think about that it makes a lot of sense you gotta have cream for your coffee y'all i had cream in my coffee for the first time when our friends came down and visited Woo, buddy it was a game changer yeah that was the best cup of coffee i'd ever had in my entire life didn't you think it was good thank you candace thank Jeff. you candace <laughs> for bringing the milk yeah. yeah so that's exciting we have a guy coming today to do dirt work to level out back by the high tunnel where we're going to put our new greenhouse 
<laughs> These chickens are really loud. I'm like yeah. having to yell over them. I'm sorry. Life on a farm, right? So we have a lot of things I feel like in motion right now. The dirt work's getting done. In the next month, we'll have our tunnels up. We'll have seed starting season. We're prepping for a cow. We're prepping for the plant cell. We're cleaning out garden beds and prepping mending beds. For life. Prepping for life. We're always prepping for life. <laughs> It's an exciting time on the farm though, don't you think? That's right, it is. Yeah, I feel really good about where we are. And I think too, like I mention this all the time, it doesn't happen overnight. Like we've been here since August and like we're just now like making steps in the direction that we want to go. And it's going to take time. It's not all going to happen overnight. It's going to take us years and years to make this farm how we want it and have all the things on it that we want to have. But I think like slow and steady wins the race. Like don't. That's right. Don't overcommit yourself to things. Like I would love to have a cow right now, but I have too many other time commitments to where I'm not gonna do that to myself because one, I would get overwhelmed, the cow would suffer. So I know better. I know that sometimes there is value in saying no, not right now and looking forward to in a few months, that's something we can add on. And so I think that's kind of where we both are right now. There's a lot of things we wanna do, but we're taking it day by day, figuring out realistically with the time commitments what we can and can't add to our homestead right now. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. What, baby? What are you doing? You want to hold the eggs? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Gonna, our chickens are still laying. We're getting about four or five eggs a day. I'm a you want to put it in your pocket? Oh, you don't have pockets, Junie. No pockets. That's okay. It's dangerous to put eggs in your pocket. That's how you get omelets. <laughs> pocket omelets. Let's go take it inside, okay? I'm a, I'm a hot pocket. Yeah, you don't have... Uh-oh, look, you gotta get it. Alright, let's go take them to Daddy, okay? We'll put it in I'm there. A pocket. We'll go put it in the kitchen. I'm a, I'm a pocket. So we're back here trying to get stuff ready for the dirt work guy to come. Nathan's had this silage tarp over here. Gosh, babe. How long have you had this tarp on here? A while. A long time. It looks really good though. Um, just killing off the grass. Why did we do that if they were going to come and do dirt work? Because I was tired of mowing and weed eating. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Story of my life around here. Yeah. Mowing uh -huh. and weed eating. So you guys can kind of see where we have the flags. We are going to have like a a walkway in between where we could get wheelbarrows, we could get a side-by-side -side one day if I'll ever buy that for Nathan. Um, <laughs> so we are gonna give ourselves enough room to grow in the future with it. And then if you remember the greenhouse that Sean built me back at our old farm, we're actually going to extend on that and make it twice as big. So instead of having two smaller greenhouses, we're gonna have one larger seed starting greenhouse, which I think is gonna work really well for what uh, we're wanting to accomplish and just the amount of seeds that we're gonna need to start this year for our own farm and then for the plant sale. So I'm gonna be uh, uh, doing a time lapse while the guy's here and whenever Sean comes to build the actual greenhouse, we'll have a video up in the next coming months on what all this process looked like. To give you guys a chance to ask questions and us. Uh, an opportunity to answer some of those questions if you have them but i'm excited this was kind of always my dream to just have this back part of the farm filled up with high tunnels uh, with vegetables and flowers and seed starting and so i feel like things are finally starting to pan out and happen feels good don't you think it does feel good i'm ready to get this uh get this up and just have like this back part of the farm as a very usable part of the farm yeah yeah, I'm excited. Before I end this video though, I really wanted to show you guys my cabbages. Also, check out the eucalyptus. All right, y'all ready to see this? Look at that! So this will be the lovely one that makes it into the cast iron skillet tonight. But we've got this one that's really good. This little guy's coming along. We got this one. Sean came out the other day and planted some anemones and ranunculus that he pre-sprouted. They're all starting to come up real nicely, so that's real exciting. But the tunnel looks great as things are starting to die 
in the raised bed garden. I just know that this little space is going to be my refuge come January and February. I'm going to be direct seeding a ton of stuff. When I get all those cabbages out, I'm just going to be direct seeding a whole bunch of stuff. So that'll be exciting uh, to kind of show you guys what we're going to be growing in the middle of winter. Uh, usually our winters here in Arkansas don't start until January or February. Uh, usually November and December are pretty mild. Like today it's supposed to get up to 60 you know, I mean, to be almost December, that's that's like a spring day, right? <laughs> so we don't really know harsh winters in Arkansas, but if they do come, they're coming later in the season. Um, so I'm excited to just kind of have this space as a refuge to kind of hunker down into uh, come January and February. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today as we kind of updated you guys on some projects we have going on. Do not forget last day to register for the Beginning Bloom Summer Cutting Garden course. And you have through December 6th to order any merch and dice. All the links will be down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and I'll talk to you soon.